We've been testing and using the M2 Pro MacBook Pros for three months now, and in that time, we have found a lot of very unique things about these new updated machines that most people don't talk about. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys an updated review with all of the info and findings from both regular usage to some more hardcore tasks and talk about how the M2 Pro compares to the M1 Pro machines that you can get for as low as $1,400 refurbished on Amazon for the 14 inch and $1,500 for the 16 inch, which is $1,000 less than getting the M2 Pro. Now those links are in the video description if you guys wanna check them out, but that's a killer deal. So is it worth spending the extra money? And with that, how do the M2 Pro Max compare with the best Windows laptops? Now we just found out that Apple's Mac sales have plummeted by 40% which is absolutely terrible, and there is a reason for that. Now, when we were first expecting these M2 Pro and Max machines, most people thought that they are gonna be three nanometer based because the producer of the chips for Apple started to make those chips already. But as we got closer to Apple's fall events, this machine did not show up. In fact, it was the first time in 21 years that Apple did not have a fall Mac event. So because of that, we figured that we are getting three nanometer, they just needed some more time or maybe even four nanometer uh, because that is what the competition has started to put out and they put a big marketing push behind that. But at the end of the day, when Apple finally released these, it turns out that they are still based on the same old technology just overclocked causing it to use more battery and have higher temperatures. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. But that caused a lot of people to be quite negative about the machines. And because of that, it also does not help with sales. Now, with that said, in your day-to-day -day life, you don't notice a lot of that stuff. And for people that don't care about those specs, if you're buying this machine, I wanna talk about what your user experience will be like before comparing it to the M1 and and to Windows alternatives. Now, this redesigned MacBook is an amazing machine. We have all of the ports, including HDMI, we have MagSafe, and with the updated one, we have color matching cables, we have a larger display that has mini LED. And if you've never experienced this update, that display gets up to 1600 nits and it makes HDR content look fantastic, both from movies and then even photos photos that have high dynamic range, like from your iPhone. Um, just the whole display is really nice. With that, the webcam is fairly good and the keyboard and trackpad are also excellent. Pretty much the best that you can get. And if you're upgrading from an older MacBook, you will be shocked by the speakers. The 14 inch is great and the 16 inch is just a shockingly good. Even though I've had this redesigned for a few years now, it still surprises me when I turn on a movie or play a video how good it sounds. And with Apple Silicon chips inside, they absolutely destroy the old Intel models and they run quieter as well, which is really nice. The battery life has been upgraded. If you're want wanting to buy one of these and you have an older Mac or Windows, you are gonna be absolutely happy with the system. But then the question comes back in, is it worth getting the M2 Pro over the M1 Pro? And there's a lot of little differences that most people do not talk about. So I'm gonna cover that. But first, if you would like to be a part of the exciting tech industry, but you don't know where to start, check out our sponsor, Full Sail University. At Full Sail, you can learn all the aspects of computer science, artificial intelligence, mobile development, user experience, and game development in addition to other degrees. Offered on campus or online, Full Sail's programs will allow you to gain hands-on experience while learning at the pace of the industry. 
Full Sail University's Computer Science Bachelors offers concentrations in Artificial Intelligence and Mobile Development. The AI concentration guides students to design, develop, and implement their own AI solutions, while the Mobile Dev concentration focuses on programming languages for Android and Apple devices. If you like design, the User Experience degree goes in-depth on what factors influence UX design, such as factors like psychology and perception, visual design, and systems design. Graduates have worked with companies such as NASA, Unity, Google, and Epic Games, to name a few. To find out more about these exciting programs and how to get started, click the first link in the description below, or just head straight to fullsale.edu slash maxtech. Now, the first difference between the M1 Pro and M2 Pro is the webcam, and the actual hardware is the same, but it's due to the image signal processor, which results in actual footage looking quite a bit better. But unfortunately, the speakers actually sound worse because of Apple's tuning, go ahead and take a listen. The high frequencies have actually been tuned down and I do not prefer that. Now I mentioned that the M2 Pro chips use more wattage or power and because of that, the system heats up more so. But what is interesting is that Apple is okay with that. The whole system runs hotter, but in these last few months, uh, you don't really notice that in terms of fan speeds because they want it to stay quiet. Now, the thing that irked me and a lot of other people is the fact that Apple downgraded the SSDs because it costs them less money. If you get the base 512 gigs, the speed is pretty much half that of the previous MacBook that you could still buy being cheaper. Now, that really sucks, and if you're transferring large files, that could definitely make a difference, but I will say, day to day, with regular use, you don't really notice it like you do on the base level M2 chips. And to fix that, you need to spend at least $200 more for the one terabyte just to get the speeds of that $1,399 M1 Pro refurbished model. Now, as far as performance, that's where the M2 chip should do a lot better, right? Well, if you look at Geekbench 6, it is clear that you are getting some performance. And then taking a look at actual usage, for example, photo editing, you notice the difference. And that is because it uses both the CPU and the GPU, but other tasks like video editing, in real world use, it's not that big of a difference in exporting. Well, the speeds are the same because the actual media engine has not changed. Now, in terms of gaming performance, not a lot of people game, but the graphics, it has improved. And certain bottlenecks have been removed because of the TLB cache memory. That limit has been greatly improved, but you only notice that fact if your system is maxed out or if you're doing something that maxes out the graphics, which a lot of times that does not happen. But in terms of battery life, this is where it gets very interesting. Now, in terms of mixed use, you can get better battery life because of the efficiency cores that are in the M2 Pro chip. We have four of them instead of two. They're a lot more powerful. And if you're doing light tasks, you can actually get better battery life. But when you push the system hard, it does get worse. Now, recently, one video that I put out showing you guys how to get the best battery life on a Mac, um, I did more testing on using the low power mode and using it for very light tasks like for example, surfing the web and email. And in that, the 16 inch M2 Pro can hit 24 hours of battery life, which is absolutely insane. And your M1 Pro model will not be able to do that. This is one of the most impressive things about the M2 Pro chips. For example, with the 14 inch in low power mode, you actually get basically the same performance as the M1 Pro at full performance. So yes, you do lose some performance, but not very much. 
And as a plus, the temperatures of the system get lowered so much so that the fan stays off while the M1 Pro would be running. So the issues with heat, well, those are gone in low power mode. And in these last few months, I was just able to leave the low power mode on all the time without really noticing any performance loss. So I think that is actually an even more important part with the M2 chip than the actual performance gain, that you can leave it there, get killer battery life, and get very, very good performance. Now, I will say that that won't matter to everybody because the M1 Pros already get killer battery life much better than Intel systems. So maybe you won't mind plugging into charge, especially with a 50% charge in just 30 minutes. Uh, but to me, that is really awesome to have a silent machine that has insane battery life. And with that, the other surprise that we found are the Wi-Fi speeds. I did a full in-depth video about this because the M2 Pro machines can support Wi-Fi 6E and that can gives you much better throughput. But what Apple didn't mention is the fact that regular Wi-Fi 6 has double the bandwidth and better reception as well. So just by updating your laptop, your speeds could be greatly improved. So if that's something that matters to you, if you have bad reception or multiple floors, that could be a reason to spend the extra money on the M2 Pro. So with that said, before I cover the Windows laptop side of it, is it worth spending that extra money? Well, personally, even though we have these updates, I think that if you're looking between between a $1399 refurbished M1 Pro and $2,000 for a 14 inch model or $2,500, well, that is a really hard sell. And I think personally, I would not do that. Now, if you're somebody that can grab one of these killer deals, and I do think they will keep coming up, 250 bucks off of the MT Pro 14 inch and the discounts on the 16 inch, well, in that case, I would spend the extra 350 bucks for longevity and the other benefits. Um, so that is a price gap that could be worth it. Now, with that said, how does the M2 Pro compare to one of the best Windows laptops? Well, we did a full in-depth video on this, and that is where the MacBook really shine, having larger batteries, better performance, especially if you're using it as a laptop unplugged. The Samsung, with the latest Intel machine, slowed down dramatically in terms of the CPU performance, in terms of graphics performance, almost half, and also for real-world productivity, like video editing, the slowdown is extreme. And then with that, the battery life difference is really massive as well. For example, Tom's Guide did a battery life test on this machine. They said it's great, but the 16 inch MacBook lasted almost 19 hours in their test compared to 10 hours with 60 Hertz screen and then eight hours for the 120 Hertz that you wanna have enabled. That is literally twice as good. And I presume that this is without the low power mode. With that, the speakers are better, the display is better. I mean, you really cannot compete with these new MacBooks, even though the actual prices are the same. So if you're okay with Mac OS, the M2 Pro MacBooks are absolutely phenomenal in every single way. And really the only major issue with them is that you could still buy the M1 Pro machines for a killer discount. So there you guys go, that is my update. It's an amazing machine, but because you can buy the M1 Pro for such a good price, a thousand bucks off on the 16 inch, it really makes it a hard sell. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Once again, we have all the links down there to those great deals. Click that circle button to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.